this nomad visa, of course, has been a, a popular option in both Spain and Portugal. Could we talk a, a bit about the nomad visa from a tax perspective? I'll start with you, Ricky, please. Well, so the, as I mentioned, it's something that it was, um, it was involved, it was incorporated like, um, early, early January. So it's something that it's very new and we've had a lot of people asking questions uh, about how to apply to this uh, type of visa and everything. But the government hasn't really give us, um, a lot of information about that and we've uh we are in touch with a lot of uh, immigration attorneys and apparently now in, in march they gave some some additional information so if anyone wanted to apply i mean we could assist them with that but tax wise um the the way it's gonna work it's very similar as uh being a non-resident in spain basically it gives you the the advantage to being uh working here in spain remotely for for a foreign company you can either it, it, it either works if you are self-employed or an autonomous uh or or if you're working for a for a company if you are self-employed there's one condition that only 20 percent of your incomes can be coming from spain and and the way the well, and tax wise uh you, these incomes and everything you you're generating and all the salary that is being paid to you uh it's only taxed at a 24 percent uh tax rate so it's very similar to the the way it's taxed very similar to the to the to the beckham law and also well, obviously i think you are not tax resident in spain yeah. Okay, so that's, that's yeah, very he, here the, the yeah, sorry. The, so the I'm just complicated it's, thing it's, is it, it's fifty just to confirm, it's fifty one five percent, right? No, it's twenty five uh twenty four percent. Twenty four, okay, right, okay. Because yeah, it's it's a, yeah, it's the same rate as the as the Beckham. as the Beckham law. Yeah, it's the okay. same same tax rate. Yeah. Sorry, but you, you were about to say something else. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but what, what I was saying is the 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 I mean, it's not a complicated thing, but, uh, some of the requirements, uh, the, that they are shown on this, uh, new law, they're like kind of complicated because um, the, the, the people that wants to be here and working remotely for the company, they need to know that they come, the foreign company actually needs to be registered in Spain. Uh, it's something <laughs> not a lot of people know about. Uh, but he actually, the, the, the foreign company, needs to be registered in Spain and then pay the pay the the salary through yeah through and also pay social security. Yeah. Okay, wait, so just, let me just make sure I got this. So nomad visa, you're not residents, you can run a company, but yeah. whatever company's paying you must register in Spain. Yeah. So this is whether I, I get that if you're an employee. But what if you're an independent contractor to that company? Does it so work? if you're if you're the an independent contractor of the company, then you need to show uh, a business relationship with uh with that company uh for I think it's uh, around a year uh that you've been working with the with this uh with this um with this uh different company and you need to actually demonstrate that you can work remotely for for this company that it's something that is necessary and uh, and also what i was saying earlier it's uh you, with being an independent contractor you can actually work for a spanish company but only 20 percent of your incomes can come from spain if there are more then automatically uh mm, well the this type of visa will be will be denied okay and under either scenario, whether you're an independent contractor to that foreign company or you're an employee to that foreign company, social charges will be triggered regardless. Yes. Uh, for okay. the, for the, for, for the employer, uh, for the self-employed, no. No. For the, for the, for the person that is actually employed by the company, yes, because the company will, since they will need to register. Here in mm. Spain, they will pay uh, social security. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Yeah. Because, what they recommend? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they recommend? Uh, well, and it's also one of the requirements. It's the the person moving to Spain. They need to have a private insurance. Uh, yeah. It's something that it's required. So they will not. Generally speaking, they do not have recourse to like government healthcare facilities. Yeah. Okay. That is correct. Well, the the the, mm -hmm. the person that is employed, yeah, they they have a 
they have access to the to the public they pay social uh, charges, right? Yeah, gotcha. Understood. Understood. Augusto. Well, um, with respect to the uh, nomad visas, so this is not a, a tax regime and does not have any specific tax treatment. So mm -hmm. either the, the individual is tax resident in Portugal or not, depending on the criteria that we have already discussed. Uh, so, um, if uh, the, 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 the normal, uh, the, the individual that obtained this kind of visa, uh, um, meets the requirements to be considered tax resident in Portugal, then you would be subject uh, to, to the general rules. And, for example, it would be available the NHR regime that uh, may apply to to him. So, uh, uh, for example, if uh, he, uh, that such person has a, an activity either as an employer, employee or a self-employer, um, um, that can be considered a value-added activity, then he can as the benefits of the NHR regime, but uh, it does not have any specific tax treatment derived from the type of visa. Mm. Okay, so again, and so they just to summarize. So for Portugal, it's not like Spain in that within the program there's no special tax treatment, but it can and it's usually paired with the NHR typically, and depending on your situation, that may be beneficial because with the NHR, it doesn't apply to everyone that applies. You must fit under one of the government categories of a high value activity as is defined by the government. If you do, then you get your twenty percent. If not, you're on a regular progressive tax rate. So, but assuming that you do make the cut, it'll be twenty percent versus uh, Spain, which is twenty four percent. However, with Spain, it's twenty four percent as an independent contractor, no social charges. But with Portugal, it's twenty percent. Yes, you pay social charges as an independent contractor. Okay, so, but again, no, not. None is better than the other. It depends on your unique circumstances. And before you make any decision at all, you'd want to speak with a professional. So, yeah. Okay. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.